All right, so this next unit, it's got uh, like five sections in it. The first three are pretty short, um, pretty good application stuff that we're going to see here. Uh, so, so the first thing that we are going to talk about today is we are going to do a brief introduction of uh, metric system. So we live, I mean, as you know, we live in uh, a country that does not use the metric system by mandate. Uh, we use what's called, well, it used to be called the English system, but since the English don't use it anymore, it's now called the US system, which is you know, pounds and ounces and feet and yards and, and all of that makes up our, our system. But the rest of the world, and you all, I'm also see it here uh, a lot because it, it bleeds in from the rest of the world, uses the metric system. Okay, so we're just gonna have a brief introduction on, on what it is, how to use it, how to do conversion, or actually conversions are gonna come a little later between the metric system and, and the system that we primarily use. So there are three uh, three areas that we're going to talk about the metric system and what the what the base unit are. So in the in metric system, we have our base units. Not all of it. Uh, this first section is, and uh, the first and second section, second section we barely do anything in. So the. Uh, we, we introduced the metric system in the, what will probably start today, if not get all the way through, just depends on uh, how we're feeling. Um, we'll talk about conversions, so we're going to talk about both systems, and then that'll be just really, a really quick flyover of using the metric system. One of the reasons why, is, and this is a big reason, is because a lot of people who take this class are going into some sort of medical field, nursing or uh, you know, physical therapy or radiology or one of, you know, something like that, where metric system is used exclusively. So you have to kind of get used to being at least somewhat versed in it. So that actually the stuff we cover here, we've been asked to cover this by the nursing department because they want their students to have a little bit of knowledge in this area. Okay, so the base units that we have uh, in the metric system are the, the base unit of length, is the meter. I used to have a meter stick here, but maybe they took it because it was, oh, it's on the floor. Look at that, thank you. So if you're familiar with a yard, a yard is three feet, okay? On this side, from this end to here, this is about a yard, 36 inches or three feet. And so a meter is a little bit longer. A meter is about three inches longer than a yard, but it's pretty similar in length. So this is the base unit of, of length in the metric system. Uh, this right here, it's standard. No matter where you go, you will have the same meter. The base unit of volume is the liter. I don't have a, a liter on me, let me see. I mean, we've drank, we've probably most of us have drank soda, and so you're, you're familiar with the two liter bottle. This is almost a liter. It's like 94% of a liter, so it doesn't really give you a great picture. But a liter water bottles, it's standard water bottle size that you go to the convenience store you buy, or when you get the, the case of those are half liter bottles. Okay, so that's about the, that's the, the volume, that's the size we're talking about. And then the standard unit for, for mass or, or weight is, uh, is the gram. And we're used to grams because if you look on the packaging of any of the food that you consume, uh, most of the weights are given in grams or some, uh, some division of grams, which is what we're going to talk about. So these are the three things. So for us, when we tend to, because if, we are immersed in it. We tend to think of length in terms of feet. Uh, we tend to think of, of, of volume in terms of gallons. You know, that's how we buy our milk and everything. 
And then we tend to think of mass in terms of ounces or pounds and things like that. So it's just a different way of labeling the same thing. So one of the problems way back in the 70s, before any of you were even in existence yet, there was an attempt to try to convert the United States to the metric system. But so when they converted the speed limits, instead of miles per hour, they converted to kilometers per hour, uh, people got upset because they said they were going faster now. But the thing was, is the, the because of a, a kilometer is, a, is less than a mile. The, so when you're driving your car, most of the cars have, you know, on the little speedometer, have the miles per hour on the outside and the kilometers per hour on the inside. Kilometers are smaller, so the, the, the kilometers per hour is going to be a larger number, but you're still going the same speed that you would have been going. So anyway, people just did not take well to converting to the metric system. And so they, they stopped it. So the thing is though, if you're, if you're measuring the distance in the metric systems from here to let's say to Tampa, you're not gonna use meters. That would kind of be, kind of be silly. So we need, uh, we need ways to measure bigger things or smaller things. And so what we have are some prefixes, and this is the key bit of information that you need to remember from this section and that we are going to practice as we go through these sections. So the, the prefixes for the metric system. So those like this, uh, the prefix kilo, kilo means times a thousand, so a thousand of something, that's what that prefix means. The next one is Hecto, hecto means times a hundred or a group of a hundred of something. Uh, deca is the next one, but I don't remember if it was a C or a K because I'm not great with spelling. I did it, good job. That's times 10. And then in the middle, not to be forgotten is your base. That's important to put there uh, because of the way that I'm going to introduce how to do conversions. And then the smaller prefixes, the first one is uh, deci, and that means times a tenth. Centi is times a hundred, and then milli is times a thousand, okay, or a thousand of it. So for instance, back to our meter stick, if I was to string along a thousand meters. If I was to put a thousand of these back to back to back to back, that's what a kilometer is. It's a thousand meters. Okay. And if you only want a part of it, so from here to where my finger is, that's a tenth of a meter. That would be called a decimeter. Okay. So that's how these prefixes are, are going to work. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, let me tell you the abbreviations for everything so that we're not writing everything out for our bases. Meter is M. It's pretty, pretty logical the way they've done it. Liter is going to be L. And gram is G. Those are our bases that we're going to be using. And so then the letter that comes in front of it tells you which of the prefixes you're using. So kilo is K. Hecto is H. Deca, this is the only one that is uh, a little different because we have two that start with D. So Deca is D-A, Deci is D, Centi is C, Milli is M. Now we're focusing on these prefixes simply because uh, they are the most common day-to-day -day metric prefixes, but there are others. You don't have to you don't have to memorize these or remember these or anything, but I just want you to have awareness. So let me see if I can if I can do this real quick on our change our camera here. There it is. Oh, that doesn't look good at all on a nice camera. Okay, so a little bit difficult to see. I apologize for that. Let's see if, uh, well, it won't work on it. What I'll do is I will copy this chart out of the book 
uh, out of the ebook and I will post it. Yeah, all I want you to do is just be familiar that there are other prefixes. So again, on this chart, if you could read it, the base is right in the middle. And then you can kind of make out this says decta, hecto, kilo, but then you can keep going. Mega would be times a million. And then giga is times uh, a billion. And so we're kind of familiar with those prefixes from computer memory, right? Gigabytes and, and terabytes. Terra is times a trillion. And so then you can also get smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you're in biology and you're you're looking at the you're looking at cells and things, you might look at micro, which is a million. You might look at nano, which is a, a billion. Pico. So there's all these prefixes to be able to describe things of varying sizes, whether it's it's very large or very small. And so just a little bit of awareness there, trying to help you understand and visualize the metric system. A little bit because I know for a lot of us it's new and different and we're not used to using it. Okay, so what we're going to do here, what we're going to take some time doing is we're going to just do some conversions between our different metric units just to see how to do those conversions. The nice thing about the metric system is it's base 10. Okay, everything is 10 times the previous the previous column, which is just how our number system works. So this makes conversions pretty easy to do at first. It's just a matter of getting used to it. And if you were born into, a, if you lived in a place or born into a place that used the metric system, then you just do this naturally, okay? It's not something that you probably even have to think about. So let's say this, let's say I want to convert uh, 343 grams and I want to know how many, let's say, how many hectograms, HG, how many hectograms is that going to be? So here is how you do conversions. And this is the reason I've set up the prefixes in this particular order right here, just like our numbers, uh, our place values on our numbers, the bigger place values are on the left, the smaller place values on the right. What you do is you go, you start at, in this case, we're going to start at our base unit, and we're going to see how many decimal places do I move to get to, to get to hectograms. So here's my base. I'm starting here, and I'm going to go one hop, two hops to get to hecto. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to take the decimal in this number, which the, the decimal, when a, when a number doesn't have a decimal written on it, where is it implied to be? At the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this decimal and I'm going to move it two hops in the same direction that we went on the prefixes. So I went two hops to the left. So I'm going to go one, two hops to the right. And what that says is that is 3.43 hectograms. That is the answer. And that's how to make a, a metric conversion. So the key for you is remembering what the prefixes are. Um, I've just done it enough that I remember, but there's a couple nice little, uh, I don't know, I don't remember the, what, what these things are called, but when you make up a sentence to represent something, um, the, the most famous one is King Henry died by meaning the base drinking chocolate milk. So what a way to go. Okay, so if that might help you remember the first letter of each of these. Okay, so I'll write that down. I was looking at my pictures on my phone because I had found another one. It was about cats and dogs, but I don't I don't remember what it is. So I'm not even going to try. But if you Google it, uh, so kind of the famous one is King Henry died. Why? That's important. Don't forget your base. Otherwise, this conversion technique will not work. Drinking chocolate milk. Okay. Had chocolate milk when King Henry was around, but that's no matter. We're not going to look into that too much. Okay, so here's your example. I want you to do a few. In fact, you're going to do most of the rest of them. So let's say we have this. If I give you, let's do uh, 92.7, let's say, liters, and I want you to please use our conversion, and I want to know how many. Uh, how many milliliters is that going to be? So you're converting liters into milliliters.
Okay, so what I'm hoping you did, and again, we're learning. So if you didn't do this or didn't realize this is what you were doing, again, we're starting at liters. That is the unit on the left. That's the base unit. And now I'm going to milliliters. So this time I'm going to take the decimal and I'm going to go one, two, three hops to the right. Okay, so coming over here, my decimal is right here in between the two and the seven. I'm now going to move that decimal three hops to the right. So I go one. Now, when I, the one takes me behind the seven, when I do the next two, what am I going to have to fill in for the next two decimal places? Zero. Zeros, yes, one, two. So that's going to be 92,700 milliliters is the appropriate unit. Here's another one, try this. Let's say that you went uh, 524.7 meters. I want to know how many kilometers is that? So we're at meters, we're going to kilometers. So it's going to look like this one, two, three decimal places to the left. So I'm going to take this decimal, one, two, three decimals to the left. And so that should be 0.5247. Are you getting the hang of this? Because once you do, it's not too big of a deal. It's just a matter of seeing what's going on. So if, if you're not, please let me know so I can do a better job and help you. Uh, Help you get up to speed with this because this is basically the content of the first section that we're talking about today. Okay, so we're going to talk about this for, for a little while longer. We'll do more conversions. Here's one more conversion involving the base unit, and then we are going to talk about converting to other things. How about this one? Let's say that I give you, um, let's say, 900, 947. Let's go, let's go hectometers, and I just want to know how many meters is that? So we're turning hectometers into meters this time. Okay, so this time we're starting at the hecto, the H, and we're moving in the direction of meters. So I'm going to start here this time. So if you didn't realize to do that, that's okay. That's why I changed the example up. So we, we see, so I'm starting at hecto, and I'm moving in the direction of meters. So that means I'm going to move the decimal two places to the right. So I'm going to take the decimal. Again, there's not, there's not one printed, so it's at the end of the number. I'm going to move it two places to the right, and so that's 94,700. Pretty close to this number right here. I need to get out of my rut. Okay, so we don't always just convert to and from the base unit in the middle. You convert between other things. So for instance, if you have this, I want you to give this one a try. Let's say that we have 0.347 uh, decagrams, and I want to know how many centigrams is that? So this time we're starting at deca and we're moving in the direction of centi. Okay, that's how we're going to use our prefixes here. Okay, going from deca to centi. Okay, so we're 
whatever you're given, okay, if you're still struggling to see what's going on, whatever you're get, given is where you start. So we're going to start at the DECA, and what we're looking for is the direction we're going to move in. So here's the DECA. I'm going to go one hop to my base, two, three hops to the right to get the centi. So that is one, two, three hops to the right. So we've got 347 centigrams. Try this one. Let's say that you have 704 704 millimeters, and you want to convert that into decimeters. Right, this time we're starting at milli, so all the way down at the right hand, and we're going to move to deci. So here's milli. This is where I'm starting. And to get to deci, I go one, two hops to the left. So I start with my decimal place, one, two hops to the left, and I get 7.04. Is anyone struggling to get these values? Are we doing all right? Because I just got a couple more examples and then a couple problems where we're going to, we're going to order some numbers. So I just want to make sure we're feeling okay. So I can put several of these on the test when we have it, whenever it is, and you're going to feel good about doing this, right? Please. Okay. Awesome. Yes. All right. Let's so let's try this one. Let's say that you have uh, this will be the last just plain old one we do. Let's say that you have six point three seven five uh, decameters, and you want to turn that into how many, uh, let's say, how many centimeters is that? So we're going from decameters to centimeters. So deca is right here. So that's one. Oops, let's erase this. So, so we've got one, two, three hops to the right. So one, two, three hops to the right. So it's 6,375 centimeters. So I saw lots of nodding when I asked if we were getting these values. So I'm hoping you're telling me the truth. There's no reason that you shouldn't be because we're not in a rush for time. And uh, I got nowhere to be until 10 o'clock anyway. So uh, but I'm going to press on, okay, unless somebody stops me. So this is the last bit from this section. We're still doing the same thing, but now it's just in terms of a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to arrange these numbers. From largest to smallest. And here are the numbers. Let's say that we have this we've got 2.3 liters then we've got 3421 millimeters and then we've got 104 centimeters so here's the purpose to this it's just to make sure you're understanding what the units are telling us, because you can't just look at this and say, oh, cool, the 3,421, that's the biggest value. I'm going to put that first, because they all have different units. So the chore here is to convert each of these to something in common. Okay. It doesn't matter what you pick. You could pick kilometers if you felt like and convert them all to that. But what I'm going to do, and I have no secret reason for making this choice. If I have secrets, I'll tell you the secrets. I'm going to convert all of these to millimeters so that we're looking at the same thing with every one of them. And then we'll be able to compare accurately which one's the largest and which one's the smallest. So we're going to convert all of these to millimeters. So the 2.3 meters, when I go from my base 
to millimeters, to, excuse me, to millimeters, that's one, two, three hops to the right. So I'm going to go three hops to the right with this. So that's 2,300 millimeters. I guess I do have one little secret. The reason I picked millimeters is because it's already one of the units. So it saves me a little work. Okay, instead of doing something that I have to convert all three to. So if I were you, if I was giving a suggestion, you can convert to anything you want, but I would pick either meters or millimeters or centimeters to save yourself just a little bit of work. So this one in the middle is 3,421 millimeters. And then the 104 centimeters, I'm gonna to convert to millimeters. So that is just a matter of going one hop to the right with that. So when I go one hop to the right with the decimal, I get 1,040 millimeters. And so then I asked you to put this from largest to smallest. That was the purpose of this problem. So the largest thing I had actually did turn out to be this, but don't always make that assumption. So the, the 3,421 millimeters is the largest. The next is the 2.3 meters. That was next. And then last but not least is the 104 centimeters. That is the smallest of those three measures. So we're just gonna end our time in this section by having you do one or two problems like this. I put, I put one or two of these on the test just because it allows me to, you get, you've gotta do two or three conversions for the price of one problem. So, uh, so that works out pretty good for us. So do this one, please. Let's say that I give you these things uh, and I ask you to put them from, yes, um, Don't be sorry. On the test, that, like, no, that's this is you. You have to remember this. Okay, so that's knowledge you carry in. Um, um, there will be some things that I'll give you on this test, and we'll talk about that if we get into section 7.4 today. Uh, I'll tell you the types of things that I will give you. Uh, I try to keep to a minimum the stuff that you have to trivia you have to remember, but that that's good trivia to remember. Okay, yes. Um, Honestly, I would not mark you wrong either way, but I'm just I'm answering with the intent. When you're in my math lab, that's what they're going to want you to do is to go back to the original form. Okay? My math lab is very rigid because it's a computer and it doesn't have every possible option. Okay. All right, great questions. Appreciate those questions. So here's one. Try this. Let's say you have 4.4. Decameters. The next one is 0.52 kilometers. And then the last one is going to be 620 centimeters. And you are asked to, to put those from largest to smallest, is what I want. Largest to smallest. Okay. 
Okay, so I did not tell you, I probably should have, so I apologize. I did not tell you what to convert them all to, but just know no matter what you pick, we will all come to the same conclusion. That absolutely does not matter. I'm going to convert everything to decameters, uh, but if you converted everything to kilometers or centimeters, or if you just did meters, it will all, we will all have the same conclusion at the end. So this is 4.4 decameters. There's no change that I'm going to do there. I'm going to convert kilometers to decameters. So the kilometers, I'm going to move two decimal places to the right. So that is going to be, uh, that's going to be 52 decameters. And then I'm going to move the centimeters to decameters. So centimeters is way down here. And I'm going to move that one, two, three to the left. So one, two, three to the left, that's 0.62. Decameters. Okay, so I converted everything to decameters. Okay, no matter what you did, though, I mean, that's not right or wrong. So if you're, I see several people writing, uh, and you have, there's a lot of reasons to be doing that, but if you convert it to a different unit, that's not wrong. Okay, so no need to change that. Okay, that's my, that's an arbitrary point of reference just to, to compare now, now that they're all the same. So I ask for largest to smallest. Make sure you read the instructions on whatever problem you're doing. So the largest is going to be the 0.52 kilometers or the 52 decameters. The next one is going to be the 4.4 decameters that was given. And then the last one is going to be 620 centimeters. That's the last one. Do you want to do another one or do we feel okay about this? What, did you say another one? Let's do another one then, yes. All right, one more of these, and then we will go ahead on to the, the next section is super short. There's just one thing we're gonna talk about in that section. And then the third section, if we get to it, like I said, I'm not gonna to rush today, uh, but if we get started on that, that's probably the most important section. Maybe uh, for some of you, it might be the most important section we do in the class. If you are going into uh, nursing or some other medical field, it's, it's a, it'll be a big deal for you. Okay, so again, we're gonna do this from largest to smallest. So I would like you to do this. Let's say that we have point, uh, no, let me go in the order they're given here because who knows why they are. So let's do 4.3 liters. That's the first number. The second one is 420 centiliters. And then the last one is going to be uh, 0 0.045 kiloliters. And let me just declare, uh, since I'm thinking of it, Again, this is arbitrary, but I just want us all to be doing the same thing. Convert all of these to liters. Let's just use the base unit here, convert them all to that, and then we will compare which one's largest to smallest. Again, largest to smallest. I'm going to begin converting all these to liters. The first one, the 4.3 liters, it is already in liters. So there we go. The next one, I'm going to convert centiliters to liters. So here's my centi prefix. So that means I'm moving one, two places to the left. So that is going to be one, two places to the left. So that's 4.2 liters. And then the last one is 0 0.045 kiloliters. So I'm going from kilo to liters. So that is going to be one, 
to three units and I'm moving the decimal to the right. So one, two, three. So that's 45 liters. Anybody have a problem getting any of these? Are we doing all right with this? And now it's just largest to smallest. So of these that are now all the same units, the largest is the 0 0.045 kilometers, or if you wrote it down 45 liters, that's fine for me. I'm comfortable with either. The next one is going to be the 4.3 liters that we were given like that. That's the next largest. And then finally, the smallest one of these is the 420 centiliters.